This is one of my favorite things ever. And I've been wanting to do some more. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to My Tick at the Lake. This is watercolor on old bedsheet. Completely inspired by Janet Nash. <laughs> painting, watercolor painting on fabric. I put some of my, my silver watercolor on there and just spattered and had some fun with color and thank you very much for the inspiration, Janet. Today, I've been wanting to do another one. I'll probably do a million of these. I've been wanting to do another one, but instead of watercolors, I want to use my fun sprays that are made with the food coloring because I think they'll stay more vibrant. And I wanna do an extra step to this, but I worry that it will wash out the watercolor more. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know, we're gonna experiment. So I gotta make sure to get out my fun sprays and not the watercolor ones so that I, cause now I have two sets of fun sprays. I have the big ones and the little ones. I bought the wrong bottles on Amazon. Ugh! These are watercolor, these are fun sprays. I'm trying to use up my Holbein watercolors uh, because I don't like them. <laughs> I believe this is, no, that's watercolor too. Where is, that's half and half, half watercolor, half. I'm pretty sure this is half and half too. We're gonna wing it. I'm just gonna like throw spaghetti at the wall. And... So how I did this is I finally got myself a 10 inch embroidery hoop from Walmart, $2.96 or something like that. I had a giant white bed sheet, cotton, nice old fashioned heavy duty cotton. Oh, it's so lovely, but it's huge and it's been in the basement and I'm pretty sure I had it. I would lay it out in the yard for the dogs so that they'd have a cool place to lay on hot days. And so it's kind of stained and you know, muddy, but I washed it and then I cut strips, giant strips, bigger than 10 inch. I wanted, I think they were 12 by 12 inch squares. I could have gone a little bit bigger cause I, ooh, didn't leave myself very much room here. But I cut a whole bunch of them and then I ironed them because they were, they're cotton and they were pretty wrinkly. And then I proceeded to wad them up and throw them in a corner for a while. So what was the point of ironing? I'm not sure. I straightened one out and most people have put things in, a, in an embroidery hoop, but this, this loosens to loosen this top, top one. I don't wanna take it completely off cause I got it all nice and lined up here with the half ones. So I'm not gonna take it off, but there's two pieces here. This one fits inside of this one. You put your fabric over the, the one that goes underneath. You put the top one on, you get it pretty tight, not all the way. And then I pull mine really taut nice and taut and it gets rid of all the wrinkles and whatnot and then tighten that down i was gonna get a purple one but it's plastic and i th i figured plastic would stretch a little bit maybe this bamboo will too i don't know but then you pull it nice and tight and tighten it up again if you can and then my friend Leanne got me some wonderful socks that have Boston Terriers on them. They're puppy love socks. And my wonderful friend at Doki Doki Forest said, oh, that'd make a great paw print stencil. And I've been using it as such ever since. So that's how these came to be with this lovely stencil. No rocket science here whatsoever. Now, if we go back to this one, you can see that it, it bleeds. And I, I'd like to try to keep it inside the lines if I can. Some I did better than others. I, I kind of figured it out that it, it just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> and that's all right. You know, it's it's okay. It's part of the look, you know. It's part of the, the uh, messiness of it. And that's all right. But this time I'm going to try, we'll see, to keep it contained. Now I have some little pieces here. I'm just going to use this scrap piece I'm looking for purple. I'm just going to use that little scrappy bit to 
lay my sprayer in there and then I'm just gonna paint go right in here and and see see how, how much more vibrant this is already how how much darker this is already gotta be careful gotta be careful I'm sure we'll add more later. This is fun. It's already starting to do fun things. Look how the it's separating. I don't know why. I'll clean my brush out. That little scrap piece. Because the, the scrap pieces always end up looking way cool. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to take this. I'm pretty sure this is half watercolor and half food coloring. I'm going to add a little bit more food coloring in here because I can't remember. I always think I'm doing good because look, right now they kind of stopped, but it's already starting to creep. And if I add anything, I want to add another color down here. That's going to re-wet this. It's going to add more water. And so it may travel. <laughs> did I mix it? Nope, I did not. I just put it in here. I'm doing these with an eye toward slow stitching with them somehow cutting them up using the panels I, i'm not sure exactly how kind of looks like an injury looks like sore paws I didn't clean this brush out this time. I left the pink in there and dipped into the blue, and so I'm getting some purpley kind of vibes again, which is always fine with me. I always have room for purple. Now, I, I, when I did the other one, I kept going back into it because I wanted the color darker. I wanted the color darker. I wanted the color darker. However, when you do that, you're adding more water, and the more water there is, the more it's going to travel. So... You gotta pick one. Either take the color as it is and stay inside the lines, or get deeper colors, but it's gonna spread. That's a pretty hideous yellow. Yuck. I wonder. Watercolor. That one looks dirty. Look at how much it's spread. Oh, that stinks. So much for staying in the lines. Wow, that's a mess. <laughs> oh well. Oh, that'd be nice if it would just stop. I wonder, I wonder. I wonder if you dry it right away, if it'll stop bleeding. That might be the next one that I try. It'll take a lot longer and I won't suffer you through the, the noise. I'll do another pattern, paint where I want and hit it with the dryer. Paint where I want and hit it with the dryer to see if I can contain it nicely. We'll see. Like I said, that's going to take some time and it happening today or now. For sure. Try some of the pretty yellow. Maybe, maybe I don't have any pretty yellow anymore. See how cool that is? Not even trying. Purple fixes everything. This is the best part. I 
When you're spattering, it's always good to turn your thing around so that your spatter goes in a different direction. I forgot a... There's no shame in going back into it. Especially now that I've got it soaking wet and anything that I was trying to do earlier, clearly I've given up on. But if it's not singing, go back in it. Hit her again. Give her, give her some love. What's the worst that could happen? I have more old bed sheets. I will stack or right there. So, you know, whatever. I like the interplay and there's a lot of colors in one spot. I like the spatter in in the prints. That's pretty fun. How pretty that is. Couldn't duplicate that if you tried. And I have tried. One thing I want to do while it's still wet is I'm going to I'm going to hit it with some water. But actually I'm going to use this for my watercolor kit. The reason I like this one is this type because if I push it real hard it'll get a fine mist. But if I barely pump it, it's going to give me just like a spittle. <laughs> I don't think that's probably the best description, but it's the only one I have. And I want to get those little drops into that while it's drying. Because, again... Instead of a nice fine mist, I'm getting droplets like the paint, excuse me, like the fun sprays. And since we're doing this, and since it's still wet, I'm going to put some salt on these and just see if it'll do anything on the fabric. I don't know. I'm going to wet one. I'm going to sprinkle the whole thing. And then give it some more water and just see. I've never done this. I don't know if it'll work. Either way, I love it how it is, and it's just until it dries completely, it's going to keep changing and spreading, and maybe the salt will melt and do something wonderful, and maybe it won't. Maybe I've added so much water, when I come back to it, it'll just be a muddy mess because all the colors will have blended because I got it so wet. Backside looks pretty cool, too. This would make a fun page in a dog book, you know, just to, because it is cool front and back. I'm going to let this dry. It's very different. I wanted brighter and I got brighter than the uh, watercolor ones. Quite a big difference in the two. I will add the silver watercolor when this is dry. Why wait? I did hit it with the dry, with the heat tool, so it is a little drier. Put washi tape over these because every time I pick this up, they all fell out. I want, I didn't want to keep it in the full box, but I wanted to keep it in here, so I put just a strip of washi tape all the way around it, so now they don't come out every time I touch it. So I'm gonna just do what I did last time and just kind of highlight here and there. with this. They call it white gold. I call it silver. I prefer silver. It just gives it a little bit of dimension. And 
and because it's watercolor as it dries it kind of fades a little bit so you can go in and give it another second hit it again a little second coat Very pretty. I want to bring this right up close. Look at that one. It has the entire spectrum in it. All of the colors. Isn't that awesome? I love when that happens. I think it's super, super fun. The next one I'm going to do, I think I can safely take this off now. See, it's torn. This sheet is torn and there's mud marks from either me stepping on it or the beastlies laying on it or whatever none of that matters it's clean it smells clean went through the wash no too small when i say i measured i you know i i may not have measured completely clearly not accurately <laughs> and like i said for this 10 inch hoop i could have very well gone 13 by 13 because these of course they're not quite square are they whatever i did was just barely enough so i'll put that on there fit it over that bottom hoop tighten it quite a bit but not all the way and then go around and pull it taut give it a tighten it a little bit more and pulling the material kind of like it so it's like a drum tightening it tightening it tightening it not too precise about this either I think that adds to the whimsy of it when it's not perfect plus if it's not perfect going in I don't have quite as much to worry about oh I don't want to ruin it because I've already jacked it up right I won't put as many on this one and I won't put them as close together I told the end to look out for another pair of these socks somewhere <laughs> so I can have this for my Boston book and this for my toy box Thank you again, Amy. What a great idea. I had this safely tucked away in that book. I'd have never done it. But I love it. It's always sitting right here, ready to, to draw paw prints. Oh, I already blew it. <laughs> Who's surprised? And I found even if I put it right here in the middle to get it darker, it still bleeds it further out. I've been very strategic in this. I've been trying to, you know, master this. So far, not happening. I just put a straight drop of food coloring on there. And I'm going to see if I can get a. A nice pink rather than an ugly red. No. <laughs> Not even close. Hi, Bits. What's happening, sister? What's going on? I think what I'm going to have to do is throw away all the reds. Because they're all ugly. And in my spray collection. And uh, fill it redo it remake it with the holbein opera because that's the color i want that hot hot fuchsia bright peony bubblegum pink not this crappy dirty 
Looks like an injury red. This would be the perfect one for my the experiment. The whole reason I'm doing this is for one reason. <laughs> well, because I love the paw prints. Like I said, I wanted to use them for some slow stitching projects, but I have no idea exactly how just yet. That doesn't matter. You can only do one step at a time anyway. Figure the next steps out later. Always put your lids on. Okay, I'm going to dry this with the heat gun and I'll be right back. Good enough, as I have heard people say. So here's what I want to do with this one. I want to hit it with my coffee spray and see what happens with that. Gives it a whole different look. I haven't used my coffee spray in a while and it gets a little filmy at the bottom and it sucks it up when I spray and now I have to go clean this out before I can spray anymore. I, I gotta go fix it. Of course, I put alcohol in here so that it doesn't get skanky and I didn't shake it. I just started spraying. You should always shake it, but we're back in business now. Gives it an entirely different look. I don't think that's going to do anything. My sign got all painted the other day, and my TV got all spattered the other day. As did my walls when I made the faux washi tape. <laughs> There's hot pink all over the wall above the TV and behind me over here. Yeah, I had a grand old time throwing paint around. Around, yeah. And I have to put more colors on this because now it's just too pink. But look at how pretty that is. That'd make an awesome piece for slow stitching. See, I'm, I'm, I'm all thinking about it. I haven't really done much slow stitching lately, but that doesn't mean I can't think about it all the time. So, it's a little blah. I wonder now if I take my colors... What'll happen? Can I... Should I have coffee dyed it first? Let it dry and then try this? I'll have to try that the next round. I could do this all day. I can't believe we've been here this long already. It seems like 10 minutes. And I, by the time I edit it, I'll have cut a lot out. I'll bet it, I'm here well, well over an hour doing this and it just flew by kind of bummed about that giant purple dollop right there so i'm gonna see if i can do something about it same here with that red i don't like that just red dot in the middle so i'll make it a bigger ugly red dot in the middle there i go Mhm. Mm now i've done it I think it's coming to life. I quite like it. I liked it before. I have one more thing I want to do, and then I'm going to have to get back to my reality. 
go pay some attention to little Miss Bitsy because she's feeling neglected. I don't know why she just does not like to come and sit in here with me. It's a little claustrophobic, but there's a bed under the table where Buddy always slept while I was in here. And it's nice and big, and it's clean under there. That's the cleanest spot in the whole room. It's all hers, and she doesn't want to go in there. Maybe it reminds her of Buddy. I don't know. I did wash the blankets. I left his blankets in there for a long time because I thought she would like that. But then she wasn't going in there at all, so I thought, well, maybe she doesn't like that. So I took them out, and she still hasn't come in here, so... Could be the mess. Could be that she just... She's always... Of all of them, she's always been the one to just go off on her own. Everyone would, would get... We always had new toy Tuesdays. And everyone would get their toy and go... In their different places and, and chew on their toy. She'd leave the room. She'd take her toy and she would just go in the other room. <laughs> So I guess I can't be surprised that she's out there. One more thing I want to try. Okay, I'm going to give it another squirt. Sort of a squirt with the coffee. A, to get another layer. B, to re-wet it a little bit. Because I'm going to add just some crystals while it's wet. Now there's big crystals in here and little crystals in here. And maybe I should have sprayed it after. I'm trying to get the super fine stuff, not the giant big crystals. Well, that's going to act like salt. It's going to take a while for that coffee to dissolve. So we're not going to see the results right away. I'm just going to let it do its thing, whatever it's going to do. I'm going to go love up Bitsy and have a nice cup of tea. And when I come back, hopefully, there'll be some magic happening. So we're back. It is the next day. And here's what we ended up with, with the coffee dyed one. I'm surprised how how faded it got and look at these colors that were here are now over here <laughs> these colors are over here they all seem to have floated overnight out of where they started which is fascinating to me since it's not very bright and you know since we're still screwing around with it i am gonna try to brighten it back up now that the coffee dye is down so again maybe i should do the coffee dye first and because it's coffee dyed it's it's altering you know that brown is altering going to alter every color I always keep Holbein's opera handy easy access and here's a tip if you have a hard time getting this off use a balloon Keep a balloon in your watercolor tube area. I'll try some just bright opera to see if I can brighten any of this up because it's Dullsville. And I have that one bright paw there, paw toe print that needs some balancing out over on some of the other paws because yikes. Stands out like a sore thumb. See what I did just there? <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I have a full day of editing ahead of me, so here I am procrastinating again. I love this purple because you're always getting, and it's just paste food coloring. If you look at the circles here, you get the purple with the blue outline. So it's a two for one. Isn't that awesome? I love that. I wish it would stay purple instead of separating out to blue and pink, but oh, that is out of my control. And we all know that pisses me off. I hate when things are out of my control, as do most humans. That's all I'm going to do with it. I will probably add the silver 
highlights like I did on the other one when it's dry. But I'm not going to wet it out again because I don't want all this color to be somewhere else when I come back. So we're going to leave this as it is. And to try it, of course, you don't have to do paw prints. You can do flowers and hearts and clouds and any little thing that you draw easily, draw multiples of, make a nice pattern and, and play. Have a smaller hoop. You don't have to go 10 inches. Get a smaller hoop and, and use your stamps. The way Janet has sometimes used her watercolor is she stamps it first just a, and then adds watercolor to color it in. Real light, not a lot of water, so it doesn't move all over the place. Because remember with watercolor or fun sprays, wherever the water is, the color is going to go. Right? That's why these are all over the place because, because it's wet and so the, it's always moving. And I think the reason it moved out like this is because the, the fabric is pulled so taut, it went in the direction of the poles. Right? So you don't have to get it this wet, but I think it's a fun look. I really like it. It's, you know, very different look than the original one, which is fun. And then, the the other one right so we got we got a nice mix this one almost looks tie-dye ish this one certainly looks watercolory and this one sort of vintagey i'm not sure what i would call this but it's i i still really like it and i like having so many different variations of it super fun try it you'll love it Go love up your Beastlies. It's getting warmer out. Do not take them in the car and leave them. Even with the windows cracked, give them their flea and tick meds. Get their shots so that they're protected when they're sniffing a rout. Love up your Beastlies. Keep them safe, happy, healthy, and strong. Mama take at the lake. Out for now.